Fram. Sleaze on. Barnes, don't hate me, but I still have some Super Bowl stuff. Some Go. leftover stuff. Love it. I mean, we have to get into this. Boy, have the tables have turned. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but that's at least what a lot of people are saying. NFL star Brandon Marshall. Have you heard this story? Yes. He recently reported that Taylor Swift flexed her muscle to block Kanye West's attempt to grab some of the Super Bowl spotlight. He claims that Kanye bought seats at the big game in front of Taylor Swift's seat in a quote-unquote reported effort to catch some of the attention the NFL has been bringing her. Check this out. He was trying to leverage, you know, her celebrity to make some... right. Because he's right. always, they're not going to cut to him, mm-hmm. so he's like, I'm going to strategically position myself. So every time they cut over here to her... This dude's talking out of his ass. Yeah, he alleges that she made a call or two and had Kanye move to a different part of the stadium in Vegas. He Now, but this has not been confirmed, and to be fair, I don't know if you knew this or not, he initially confused Taylor Swift with Katy Perry. I was going to say, yes, that's weak. But, you know, Kanye's kind of unpredictable. So we'll keep following this story for you. I don't know. I, I saw that and I thought, hmm, It's not true. Let me get Barnes's take. There's no way. And and by the way, Kanye is for real canceled. Like, not like some of the people who are making comebacks. No, he is. I know. Dude is done. It's cr- it's crazy, all the stuff around him and his wife. And Now, if you're on TikTok, you know you cannot go anywhere on TikTok without seeing all of the post-show parties with Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Well, how about the NFL releasing the audio between the two of them when they got on the field together when she congratulated him for the win? Yeah, the NFL released this. Thank you for coming, baby. I can't believe that. Thank you. I can't believe you. Thank you for the support. Thank you for coming. (laughs) Thank you for making it across the way across the world. You're the best, baby. Oh, my God. The absolute best. Was it electric? It was unbelievable. I like how he needs needs some affirmation at the end. Was Was it electric? Did I do good? But I have to say, this feeds into the whole NFL. Like, they know the ratings were huge, and all I can say is, wow. There had to be some deal under the table to be able to get that kind of access, knowing that Taylor's involved. I don't know where the money went, Travis, to Taylor, whoever. The audio, yeah. Had to be. Unbelievable. Jimmy Kimmel ripping the Barbie parody band-aid a full month before the Oscars because you know he is hosting. He dropped a five-minute short on Monday night directed by J.K.L.'s Will Burke, kind of hyping the March 10th gig. I always love that he does the Academy Awards. He was recreating many Barbie sets and reuniting four of its cast members in a little spoof, Barnes, that finds a hapless Jimmy Kimmel trying to make his way to the Dolby Theater. Quote, since the dawn of time, men have been getting lost this is coming from the voice of God, Helen Mirren, spoofing her own narration narration of Barbie. This is the story of one such dum-dum. You must be midlife crisis, Ken. No. Lost everything in the divorce, Ken? No. Probably should have gone a size up in that tuxedo, Ken? No, I'm Jimmy. I'm Kimmel. And I'm hosting the Oscars, and I'm lost, and I really need to get back to Hollywood. And by the way, our next guest... Dickie Barrett was the announcer for, I don't even know how many, 15, 20 years? 20 years, I think. And I don't know how that ended, but I are you going to bring up Kimmel at all to him? I, I wasn't. Well, I was going to ask cause, because Dickie's got a new band, if Kimmel's invited them on the I show. I don't know if I would ask that if I was... Why? You. They're still friends, right? Or you don't know? You don't know how it ended? I, it just ended. Oh, well, I'm going to ask. I have to. Well... You He's ask. got a new band. I'm, I'm going to skip that one. I've got plenty of other things to bust his chops over. I'll let you. Yeah, Dickie Barrett is coming up next. Well, I have one other thing I need to mention about Kimmel because one of my top fivers was on the show. Oh, who? Ryan Gosling. Speaking of, you know, Barbie. He got, <laughs> this is crazy. He got candid about his NBA dreams. I mean, you seem sporty, but what was your sport? And obviously not American football. What was, what, what did you do? I was positive I would be in the NBA. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? What do you what do you top out at? <laughs> well, that was the problem. Well, that wasn't the only problem. I think I said that was Kimmel, but it wasn't Kimmel. It was Colbert. Sorry. Uh, Colbert. Is uh, Ryan Gosling your top five? Is that age appropriate? What do you mean? Is he age appropriate for your top five? Yeah, of course he is. How old is he? I, w- I think he's got to be, I'm just going to guess. Is he like late 40s? 43. Oh, he's 43, yeah. All right. Well, I'm not picking a 20-year-old Barnes. 
I'm going to go through your top. Wait. I th- I'm going to go through like, your top hey, five. Hey. And I'm going to check out the ages Easy. of all of your. <laughs> I thought Ryan Gosling was like 33. I just no. couldn't re- He was stuck in time. Okay, 43. He's yeah. been around a while. Yeah. Do you want me to go through all your top fives? And- <laughs> it's fine. It's legit. <laughs> You're a uh, Suits fan. One quick thing. Have you seen that uh, Stephen Amell from Arrow is now going to star in the NBC drama pilot Suits L.A.? I saw that. Yeah. I need the old people or some of them to be back for me to have interest. I can't I start know, at ground like the, zero. I like the OGs. Yes. Seriously. Uh, I have a couple of big revelations, and this is a former guest on our show, Brian Cranston. Ooh, what did he do? I don't know if you knew this or not, that he was once wanted for murder. No. This is a crazy story. Back in the 70s, he and his brother decided to drive across the country on motorcycle. At one point, they ran out of cash in Florida, so they took jobs working in a restaurant to earn cash, which a lot of people do, and then they go back on their road trip. Well, there was a cook at this place named Peter Wong. Everybody hated him. So he and his brother used to joke around that they would kill him without anybody finding out. Well, guess what? After a few weeks working at the restaurant, the Cranston boys had enough money to take off for Maine. Not long after that, Peter Wong turned up dead. So the cops were interviewing people at the restaurant and all the murder talk, they started looking for them. And since they had determined Wong had died around the same time that the Cranstons left town, they were official suspects. There was even an APB out for them. At that point, they were somewhere in the Carolinas, but they never knew about it at the time because the real killer was caught before the police caught up with them. Dudes were fugitives? How is this not a movie? How is this not a movie? And how does... I've never heard Brian Cranston talk about this. And he was on the run. <laughs> with his brother. That is such a movie. I think so, too. Write the script now. Or a Dateline episode. One or the Dang. other. But either, please. Wow. Here's another revelation. Did you know Kate Hudson is in the movie Home Alone 2, Lost in New York? No. She was one of the kids singing in the choir at the beginning She would have been around 13 years old. She's got that podcast with her brother, Sibling Revelry. And she said, I still get residuals. I get like 10 cents every once in a while. Her guest was Joey Lawrence. He also shared that he gets small residuals for all the commercials he did when he was a kid. Quote, sometimes I'll get like two cents and I'm like, wait, doesn't the envelope and paper cost more? But Kate Hudson said, you know, at least they're being fair and at least they're being honest. I don't know why they mail those. They just recently shifted over to electronic, and you get this email from SAG, and it's either really good or really bad. I'll get one. Do you for get like six a cents. couple of cents? Yeah, I'll get like from a soap opera that ran in Italy. So funny. I'll get six cents. It's pretty funny. Your favorite person's back in the news, Meghan Markle, Man. getting back into the podcast game. Dude. She's entered into a deal with Lemonada Media. Why? responsible for podcasts like Wiser Than Me with Julia Louis-Dreyfus. They're creating a new podcast that doesn't currently have a name. And guess what? They're going to pick up her deal with her other podcast that she did, Archetypes. Remember why? that one why, named why, after why, their why, son? Why, 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 why? Lemonada will uh, reportedly be distributing Archetypes to multiple podcast networks to give it sort of a broader audience. Now, I don't know if you remember this story, but remember when Spotify offered Meghan and Prince Harry $20 million? Yeah, that's why I'm saying why. They fail upwards. They fell apart because they failed to produce any content. Yeah, they wanted the jack and then they didn't do squat. And the Spotify exec, Bill Simmons, even called the couple quote-unquote grifters. Yes. Yikes. She is such a freaking... Anyway, here's her statement. Being able to support a female founded company oh, uh-huh. with a roster of thought-provoking and highly entertaining podcast is a fantastic way to kick off 2024. Yeah, she's going to play that card. Okay. Let's see if they actually do anything. I mean, Will you be listening, Barnes? No. What okay. do they do? She single-handedly, I don't know how Suits took off so well with her in it because she just was the worst part of it. Well, Harry, you know, Harry flew to London because, you know, his dad was... Yeah. The- in the hospital. But he was out fast. He was in and out of there fast. Yeah, really fast. So maybe there's a reconciliation there. Or maybe there was good news and, and he didn't need to stay longer. Wow. Or, yeah, that was that was definitely. But she, everything, she's so contrived. Everything about her. It's a 50-50 with her. People either love her or not. It's been a while since Andrew Keegan starred in the movie 10 Things I Hate About You. 
And if the media is to be believed, he has since uh, turned to being a cult leader to fill his days. What? I saw this story. Yeah, he's finally speaking out about the rumors. He recently uh, joked that he woke up one day and I was anointed a cult leader. He says the whole idea was started by an article in Vice, and it called the report Clickbait Central. Check this out. They came in and, you know, I probably should have had a little bit more media training at the time. And I was just like, yeah, like everything's great. There's all these wild things going on. Sacred. And so they just really created a very interesting, colorful story and put, you know, put it together. And what was the story? I actually saw the headlines and thought this is clickbait. He confirmed he and a bunch of his friends bought this abandoned temple in Venice, oh. California to do some positive things for the community. He said, we really just got together and we did a Sunday thing and did almost a thousand events in three years. And it was actually really hard. It was really beneficial to a lot of people. They called themselves Full Circle and they dis- disbanded in 2017. So all of a sudden people are saying he was a cult leader. Well, I get it now. That's easy clickbait. He bought an abandoned temple and gave it a name. I, yeah, that, yeah. That'll get you some cult talk. I think so, too. A couple of extra um, Super Bowl stories. We didn't mention this, that I guess Usher took advantage of the weekend and got married. I saw where he applied for a license. Yeah, he got married. His longtime girlfriend on February the 11th, his mom uh, was there as well. And I thought, well, you know, that's kind of cool. You know, celebrate by getting married. That is your celebrity sleaze.